When you think about it, all law, all legislation is about the restriction of freedom. That's exactly what we're doing here, is we are restricting freedom, but we're doing it for the common good. You will see throughout our constitution, yes, you have rights, but they are restricted for the common good. Everything needs to be balanced. And if your views on other people's identities go to make their lives unsafe, insecure, and cause them such deep discomfort that they cannot live in peace, then I believe that it is our job as legislators to restrict those freedoms for the common good. I'd like to, for the record, state that I'm in favour of hate crime legislation. I think it's um, not before time that we've updated the position. Um, but I do have some concerns about the legislation, and more so, I have concerns about what's not in the legislation rather than what is in the legislation, and very specifically, um, I'm concerned about the lack of anti-Semitism protection for Jewish people within the legislation. The Holocaust began in the very early 30s with hate speech. It progressed from hate speech to hate crimes, and that progressed ultimately to the Holocaust. The attacks on the traveler community do not begin with on the night of the attack. They begin through the hate speech in pubs and the warm-up and the remarks around the place that give, give a legitimacy to all this. The attacks, the homophobic attacks in parks do not begin on the night. They begin with homophobic remarks, they begin with smutty jokes, they begin with exclusion. But what happened in Navin, didn't, those children didn't get up some morning. And it, you know, they were conditioned, it's a jokes, it's stuff online, it's stuff from television screens, etc. It's a conditioning that brought them to that dreadful position. A sort of a Lord of the Flies thing, but something that's fed into, and that has to be considered. Minister, yesterday you indicated that the only people who oppose your government's hate speech laws are, quote, fringe commentators. But of the thousands of replies to your own government's public consultations, 73% were negative. And according to the last poll done on the subject, 65% of people oppose such laws. So is it not, in fact, your government that's endorsing the fringe position here? What I think is very clear, and this is coming from the significant amount of public consultation that we've had in the last four years, um, consultation that started back in 2018, is that there is a very clear group of minority people in this country who are simply targeted and who are being either victimised or harassed, assaulted, who are victims of hate speech and hate crime simply because of who they are. So that is very clear, that is based on fact, and that is also based on reports well, that we have. Minister, with request, that's, on, that's not what if, I asked. If, I, but, I, but I'm sorry, that's not what I asked. And also, I've gone through every single one of the, the consultation re, uh, responses. There were about 3,600 of them, and that's really not what they said. The vast majority of people said they don't want this. So uh, where are you getting the idea that there's public outcry cry for this other than government paid NGOs. So that's incorrect to say that the vast majority of people don't want this. Um, I think even if you were to listen to the debate last night in the Shannad, uh, and certainly the debate in the Dáil, the vast majority of people do want this. But those it's are politicians. We're talking about the general public. Where's the, where's the public I, outcry I can either for? answer the question or, or not, but I mean, what I'm basing this on is very clear factual evidence. If you speak to Angarda Shia Connor, there has been a 29% increase in hate crimes across this country. So while we don't have hate crime Re recorded, legislation... Recorded hate crimes.